So you've got some acrylic paint, and it seems to be a common question. What do you thin acrylic paint with? There's all kinds of stuff you can thin it with. One of my personal favorites, Future Floor Shine. Believe it or not, it works very well. Um, 27 fluid ounces. I think that's six, seven bucks, something like that. Um, seems to work very well. 3% hydrogen peroxide. Again, another household item. Works very well. Fantastic. Another household item. Seems to work very well. Windex. Another product that works very well. Easy to find around most homes. Good plain old tap water. Probably the cheapest of all of them. Yeah, again, works very well. But if we have all this stuff around the house that works well to uh, thin our acrylic paints with, are there anything that we shouldn't thin our acrylic paints with? And you'll notice Windex again, but there's a big problem here. Vinegar. Vinegar will attack the chrome in an airbrush. So we don't want to use Windex that has vinegar or if it's uh, high in ammonia. Now this one here you'll notice with ammonia. I've been using it now probably for, well, I'd say going on about four years and it's not bad. I, I haven't seen any of my brushes start flaking yet. but. Uh, from everything I've been told and what I've read, anything with vinegar in it's kind of a big no-no. Uh, the ammonia is kind of a bad deal too, but I don't think you're going to find Windex anymore with vinegar in it. Or excuse me, I don't think you'll find Windex anymore without ammonia in it. Now a lot of people also tell you that uh, isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol is very good to use. I'll disagree with them. This 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol if you mix it straight with acrylics, it'll actually gum the acrylics up and it'll turn them into about the consistency of cottage cheese. Now you can get away with using a lower alcohol content. I have used a 70% uh, alcohol and a 50% alcohol and they seem to do fairly well. Um, if you're going to do the alcohol method though, especially if you're going with 90%, you need to heavily reduce your alcohol with just normal tap water. Uh, but I do not recommend 90% uh, alcohol whatsoever. Now there are some uh, commercial uh, thinners on the market as well. Fast thinner is uh, you know, one of them. There's also the uh, 4011 uh, Auto Air uh, thinner as well. Uh, I have not had the opportunity to use the 4011 so I cannot speak on it. Um, however, I've been told by a fair, fairly uh, reliable source that the Fast Thinner is just the 4011 uh, repackaged and uh, sold under a different name. Now the Fast Thinner, uh, while it works really good, the downside is, is a small two ounce bottle is fairly expensive. If I remember right, I think I had to, had to spend around four bucks for this two ounce bottle. Now granted, it'll go quite a ways, but there are a lot, uh, lot better options out there. If you want to go with a commercial uh, thinner, I would recommend looking at the Auto Air 4011 because you can buy it in a lot bigger volume and turn your price is a lot better on it. So these are some of the uh, different types of thinners that can be used on acrylic paints. Um, I guess the next thing is how thin do we actually thin an acrylic paint? A lot of people are going to tell you that you thin an acrylic paint until it's the consistency of milk. Well, my question is, is that skim milk 2% whole? Uh, is that with vitamin D? Is that, uh, you know, w what kind of milk are we talking about here? Secondly, I don't know about everybody else's eyes, but uh, when I look at milk, to me, it seems to flow about the same as water. Um, so it's kind of hard for me, I guess, uh, to differentiate between milk and, and water. I can tell that the paint's not... Uh, you know as thin as the milk but I can't uh, tell the difference between milk and water so how do I know when I get to the right level 
Well, what I came up with quite a while back uh, was just a real simple little test that uh, seemed to work very well for me. So how do we mix it? Well, one of these things to do when mixing paint is just to pick up some of these cheap plastic uh, bottles. You can get these at uh, Her or excuse me, at uh, Hobby Lobby. Uh, I think I bought these if I remember right for 49 or 69, 79. Anyways, they're under a buck. Uh, they're fairly cheap and they work really good. Uh, for mixing paint and uh, storing it because they also have flip top cap on them just like uh, your Parma or Createx bottles. So anyways what we've got here unthinned this is just fast green three drops there and you can see it's not really one to move it's pretty slow. Uh, this paint's going to be really pretty thick if we're trying to spray it through anything smaller than a 0.5 needle uh, nozzle combo and even at that uh, in a 0.5 uh, you might have some issues uh, getting this to flow very well uh, there I've got the board almost at a 90 degree angle and you can see it's still not flowing very well so now let's mix in about one part uh, reducer to approximately three parts paint. This was paint. The paint started right about there and now the reducer is probably right in here. Now when we say one to three, basically what that means is the distance between your reducer and, the, and your paint, you should be able to put that in here about three times. We should have one, two, three. Three parts paint, one part reducer. So let's mix this up and see what it gives us. Again, we'll go with three drops here. And we got a much better flow. Uh, you'll notice the edge of the paint up here at the top. The color is staying with the Lexan. It's not bleeding away. It's staying right there with the initial drop. We're getting pretty good flow. That's one part reducer to three parts paint. Let's try it a little bit thinner and see what happens. Okay, now there's my reducer. There was our original paint line. original paint line was here so you can see the distance between these is about the same so we're now at about a two part paint to two part or one for one however you want to look at it let's mix this up again we'll go with three drops here And we got a lot better flow. Uh, it's definitely moving as quick or quicker than the other side did. But again, the paint is staying pretty well up here at the edge. So it's not too wet yet. If you get your paint too wet, what you're going to see, or too thin, excuse me, is the color will start to separate from the original drop. And it will actually flow with the paint and come on down the board. It's not going to stick where it was initially placed. And here's a bottle that I have deliberately made way too wet, just so you have a better idea of what it is. Uh, this 
this bottle is probably mixed about three parts thinner to one part paint maybe two parts paint uh, the paint was up here at the bottom uh, when I started and basically from here up is thinner so this will give you a little bit better idea of how thin this paint is again three drops and you can see it just runs right off the plexiglass almost instantly now what I'd like I hope you can see is there's a separation on the paint right in here you can see the color coming away out here at the outside edge it's very it's very hard to see it I'm sure in the camera but the edge color is completely different than where the initial drop was the paint is not sticking to the Lex anymore this indicates paints way too wet so that's just one quick easy way to test your paint and see if your consistency is about where you want it um, a lot of people just like to mix and spray I mean the choice is yours this is just one of the options if you're just beginning um, again no thinner this one here is probably about three parts paint to one part reducer this is real close to one to one maybe three parts paint two parts thinner and this one over here is uh, two parts paint to or excuse me one part paint to about two parts maybe even three parts thinner and you can really see the difference in the color separation in them now